today we are in the lost land of self-knowledge. For me, in the book I read. I'm V67 again. We are almost uh, done about it. Rida Kacho Gito Kyasu Bo Bhata Nukta Mopa Girti Sarva Yati Sarva Dhari Bhati Sarvam Prakashati Winners, both of them, the sun, namely, the ultimate knowledge of the Supreme Being. What does it do? Both of them. What does it do when it comes? Tamopahut. The moment this knowledge arises, simultaneously, all the darkness vanishes. All the ignorance vanishes. The moment the knowledge comes, what is the knowledge? The knowledge is not of astronomy, it is not of anatomy, it is not of physics, it is not of chemistry. It is as to who we are, what is our real nature, who am I? So that is the real bodha. There is no use of knowing everything else, finding out. There are people who get their PhDs after spending eight years of research in a cockroach, sitting by the side of colonies of cockroaches. Somehow I think it's all a waste of time from some point of view. And then they get PhD in cockroach. So, it is better that we see what happened, I tell you. The Lord has deluded us in the multifarious form is the unity in diversity. So now if you want to analyze all those uh, parts which are coming to us in delusion, you will never reach the end. This is not only the theory of Advaita, the great Buddha theory is that. It is called Chanika Vijayanavada. Shrenika Vijnana Vada, it is your knowledge which goes and takes the shape, the various shapes it takes. It is that consciousness which has taken various forms to delete you. So what is the use of looking at it? Turn back, come back to the knower, come in the newest direction. That is what is called the vichara. Vichara means we say contemplation, meditation, cogitation, reflection, but all these are wrong. Vigataha charaha vichara, viruddha charaha. Chara means movement, viruddha means the opposite direction. So, you can get only by vichara of the problem. What is my vichara? Do not go into this problem, turn back. Who is it that is seeing this problem? There is actually the Brahmastra of Bhavan only, finally. The answer will be I, I am seeing it. The next question will be, who am I? That's all. So, that is very essential, that is the only way. So, the entire ignorance, it goes away and the sun comes. See, both are exactly simultaneous at the same time, but the one never meets the other. The sun and the doctors have never met each other. Doctors went, compliant to the Creator, not Brahma. Sir, Wherever I go, this sun is pursuing me like anything. I have no place to hide. It becomes a problem for me. Is it so? He calls the sun. Hey, Madam Doctor has been complaining that you are pursuing her. And so I have never seen that Madam at all. I have been caring about her a lot. I very much wanted to meet her. But whenever he comes, she goes away. I have never seen her in my lifetime. How can they ever meet? They have never met each other. Similarly, the light and ignorance have never met each other. Knowledge, the moment it comes, it disappears. It vanishes. It is a thick smoke. Tamopahati. Then, 
What happens? The real Atman comes out. The ego goes away. See, Bhagavan has written that Ubudeshara is a beautiful way. At the end he will say, when you pursue the ego, that ego eye goes away. Finally the real eye which is always going on, telling I, 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 that I don't listen to This basic eye is that integral, that universal eye, that alone is. It is the universal which acts. The individual is a puppet in his hand. But the ego, which is a non-entity, it comes and takes all the credits for all that goes on saying, I did, I lectured, uh, I wrote the poem. Who wrote the poem? Who lectured? You may all remember when the great Ganapati Muni was one of the most ardent devotees of Bhagavan. There were two who come to get the right and the left hand place of Bhagavan. One was the great Murugana, the other was the great Ganapati Muni. Both were equally great. You cannot compare them. It's impossible to compare this great man. Both were equally great. One was a scholar devotee in Sanskrit, the other was a scholar devotee in Kama. Both were unparalleled. Then what happened? Ganapati Muni wrote thousand poems on the Divine Mother. He had set a date and he told Bhagavan on this date this book would be, will come out. But then, out of thousand slokas of the Divine Mother, that one long meters, he could do very little, about 300 or so, a good number were left, more than 500, 600 were left. And the, tomorrow morning was the zero hour when it has to be given. So the previous night, Bhagavan Ramana is sitting inside the Virupaksha cave from the third night and the Ganapati Muni is sitting by his side and there are three or four his disciples. He is simultaneously dictating to four people. He will dictate the first line quickly to the first one. Quickly the first line of the second shloka to second one. The third shloka to third one. So each one will write one stanza and he will dictate the second line, the second line for this, the second line, second line, third line, third line, third line, third line. Four shlokas at a time he was dictating. And uh, early morning by four o'clock or so perhaps he finished all the thousand shlokas. Night about five hundred, more than five hundred shlokas were composed. On this part he would never think. You know the difference? When we ordinary people's scholars, when we want to write poems, you know what we do? Laukikanam to Vakyanam when ordinary worldly people like us want to write a big book, then the first thing what we are going to write, then you find out the words for it. Supposing I want to write a poem on Bhagavan Ramana, I just decide, oh Bhagavan Ramana, I seek your grace. So I will start saying, oh Ramana, thy grace I see, I will begin. So first I think of the meaning, then the words follow. But in the case of those divine poets, what happens is, Vacha Bhakto Nudhavati, Arshanantul Vakyana, Vacha Bhakto Nudhavati. The inspired poet, they may babble something. You write it, thousand meanings, beautiful, profound meanings will come out. Profound meanings will come out. This morning only, just today only, for the Ashram to one of them, I was dictating. The meanings of one of the books, there is a book called the Ramana Suprabhat. There is on the early morning, waking up the Lord with the beautiful praises. That has been the custom in almost all the temples. And on Bhagavan Ramana also there is a book called the Ramana Suprabhat. And the second one, the wording was Bhaktana Mangalam Kuru. Please. Bestow all your blessings and auspiciousness on the devotees. And the English meaning which was given there was, Please bestow your auspiciousness on my devotees. And it is begun by saying, Bhagavan Ramana. You know what is Bhagavan? Bhagavan means not the Ramana who sits here, 
it means the supreme being so here we mean ramana the supreme being he is not an individual he is the universal he is all so how can you write that please this the only one my duty is and not on the duty of somebody else see what a, you think is a small thing is not it is what lot of connotation the word bhaktana there is no word for your bhakta he can't be partial that only those who come to ramana sam is because he is bhagavan he is meant for the world he is meant for the universe he is meant for italy he is meant for canada he is meant for romania what is the reason why he is not so bhaktana means that wherever there are devotees who are all due to the supreme being in any form whatsoever they may be worshiping krishna they may be worshiping rama they may be worshiping nisargadatta they are all come to his care so that much of the meaning comes so where it is a divinely inspired poem where somebody doesn't write on his own by referring to the dictionary such connotation such beautiful subtle meanings come if you are not in that bhava in translating you will be making blunders that is he is remedy can dictate it then i was telling him you see this is the meaning that you are then khuda ka sho dito kya kya when on the earth the sun comes the atman rises the supreme brahman he comes up from where he is revealed he is self revealing brahman is self revealing when on that veil which was covering him which was hiding him the veil of ignorance and who i am i will take myself as a dad i am the god man i am mr ring i am mr king but you are not these are all the roles you are playing in this cosmic drama find out who you are and that final one the one who is donning all these robes and costumes that is the supreme brahm that is the supreme consciousness he is all he is playing all these roles all these people all these animals it is me you are the one and where is the place where do you look at him he is there in your heart and as i was telling the story yesterday in shri dhar there is a vast expanse of region just as as i told you in shri a small room you get a dream where you are ruling a very big kingdom the entire kingdom is there in your small room that's a different region so in a different level of consciousness when you are asleep when you are seeing the dream you are going to different region of together so that we can overlap with this all place there is a story so that a beautiful book called it, tripura rahasya i don't know whether they have got it still our library our bookstall used to have it it is a beautiful book on devi tantra but full of gyan there also a story comes a young hermit she is uh, she meets a king's son and it, they become friends He tells the prince, "Look here, I am the son of a sage. My father has given me a very big kingdom to rule. It is a beautiful place to see. Would you like to come and visit it?" The king said, "Sir, yes, I would like to." He took him in a forest at one corner. There is a small pebble, very small. A small pebble was there, small stone. Suddenly he disappeared. The sage he went inside the pebble, inside that. Then Sri Lankan entered it. He was just looking. Oh, what is he talking? You have big kingdom. He entered the temple. Then he comes out. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that you don't have those flowers. The yogi flowers are getting it. My kingdom is inside this. It is vaster than his entire year. It is vaster than his entire year. He says, "Come and I'll take you through my own yogi flowers." Suddenly he finds them inside the temple. Inside the temple is a very big kingdom. an entire kingdom that is that so similarly in that your heart that is the, the infinite kingdom of the lord that is what is told by the the bible the kingdom of the heart and that is what is told in our upanishad also dharam nipapam parame eshtu tam kat pundarikam brahmanya sagrastam it is there inside that pura Inside that city, there is a very big city inside. 
ಪುರಮಧ್ಯ ಸಂಕೃತಂ ಆತ್ಮನಿ ತಿಂತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ then that means he is only in that place no he is also sarvavyapi he is everywhere he is there he reveals himself to you from that location but he is everywhere how can he reveal himself from america russia and romania he has to be before you so naturally he reveals himself from the spot it looks that as if from that who looks who sees at that time he has become that So as such, it is all what we talk for the purpose of understanding. There is no one to see at that time and say, Oh, my Atman is here. Hello, Atman. There is nobody to shake hands. There is only the Supreme Brahman of the Revival. The individual has disappeared. He has dissolved. All your problems have been solved in that. So, where is the question of anybody there to say hello to the Atman? He comes alone. No one comes. Because there is nobody to welcome him. there is there but these are all matters in which you know the present thing is in order to try to get an understanding of it i don't know why it might take a little set i can't sarvavyapi is everywhere sarvadhari the entire illusion of the entire world who gives it in the night for half an hour you are trying to think a dream that you were a king of the country in african country you were an african potentate in charge of a very big african kingdom and you go on seeing how you roast people in eat you were a king of cannibals so all these things may be seeing in your dream half an hour who keeps the dream alive for half an hour you 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 it is your mind that comes out of the dream it is your mind is running the show similarly this cosmic dream is being done by the brahman So the Brahman is the one who is the substratum, who is the base. The entire illusion is built on this base. If there is no existence as a base, nothing can exist on it. Neither does. If there was not a row, you would not have mistaken it as a serpent. I am not mad to see nothing and then to imagine there is a serpent. There was a row which was lying. It was dark. I mistook it to be a serpent, to be a snake. So there has to be a base. Then who is the base for the entire illusion of the world? It is He. It is the Brahman. He reveals Himself to you. Sarva Bhari, Bhati. He reveals Himself. Then Sarva Prakashate. Everywhere there is a presence. The Jivan Mukta is a presence. All around him there is a presence. Whoever comes to Him bathes in that presence. Paul Brinton came. Friedman came. They all bask in the effulgence of the Lord. That's all. All their doubts were resolved without being asked. And I'm told that Margaret Turner also he came with thirty questions to ask the Lord about his world, his relationship, and all that. And people were sitting quiet. He said, "Oh, this silence, sir. I can't ask him for prayers. I'll ask him after that." Then he found this silence was going on. He said, "Let me check up in the meantime. There are the sufficient time to ask the twenty questions. Let me find to which are the questions for which I already know some answers. So I did not ask. Read the first question. The answer came fast in his mind. Oh, I know this, my Lord. Why should I ask? Take it off. Second question he read. Fast came the answer. Oh, this one so I know. He took it. Third question. The answer came flat. All the twenty questions, the answer flat." When he finished thinking, Bhagavan broke his silence and asked in Tamil, "Ibrahu dana inna irka." Only this much or have you got more? <laughs> he knows he was answering silently from heart to heart. It is the language of your heart, not the language of your country. That is what happens at that stage. So, Sarvam Prakashate, every where he proliferates and he himself is effulgent. Now we come to the last, which is a very beautiful poem which sums up the ethics of seeing the Brahman, seeking the Atman, finding out who am I, and uh, it compares the path to all other paths. How easy is it? 
compared to the way pasta rituals going to temples. Yes, they are all fast. We do not condemn them. They are equally good fast. But they are come to us. They take a long time before they can fructify into the realities of the Atman. So, here he gives a beautiful summary as to how easier it is than many of the other things. Dignesa Kala, Dignesa Kala Jana Petra Darvagam, Shita Adivan Nitya Sukham Niranjanam, Yaswa Atmatirtham Bajate Vinishkriyaha, Satarra Vinsar Vagato Bruto Bhame. Again, Dignesa Kala Adi, Ana Petra Darvagam, Shita Adivan Nitya Sukham Niranjanam Yaha Swatma Dirtam Bhajate Vinishkriyaha Satar Radhite Sambhagato Amrto Bhaveti Swatma Dirtam Bhajate She in this world In Sanskrit there is a word called Tirtha We go on a pilgrimage We go to Kashi in order to take our bath in the Ganges, that it is considered as very holy and sacred. A person who goes, they say, all your sins committed up till that date, they are wiped out. You may get new ones later on. So, similarly, Kaveri River, it is also very famous in the south, in Tanjore, Stiropole, in all these places, you will find the big Kaveri in Karnataka, Mysore. The Kauri River is flowing, it is also equally holy. So all these holy waters where by taking a bath you are supposed to wipe off your sins, not only that, the various Puranas, the various mythological accounts connected with each place. That is a Purana for each place of pilgrimage. They are called Thala Puranas. We have got 3000 such Puranas. They all contain how originally which sage came over there, how that particular place of pilgrimage happened to be first founded, by whom it was founded, under what circumstances, there are big stories about it. Like that we have got as many temples as there are in India, so many Thalapuranas are there. Many of them have been lost and still there are good many. So, they all say, if you bath in the Ganges, Later on, even if you see, nobody will get moksha immediately, even though it is told as a matter of contagion. Unless only through Gyan you can get it. Take it, no amount of rituals. You go to the Ganges of the Ganges, you can't get your moksha. You can't get your liberation. Unless you attain that knowledge of who I am, that's the only way. So, Jnana is the only way. Again and again, all, all religions, they place emphasis on it. You only the knowledge. So, but all these things, if we do, if we go to the Ganges, they say, you can go to a good region after death. You may call it the heaven. There are, we call it the seventh heaven. There are several heavens. So you may go to the Mahaloka, you may go to the Janaloka. There are so many such planes there. In each plane there are differences. One is a five-star region, another is a four-star region, just like the five-star hotels and the four-star hotels. Differences in the enjoyments, the gradation of the enjoyments you get, so one can go. But which is the best of the places of such pilgrimage? Which is the best of the Tirthas? These holy rivers, why are they called Tirtha? Tirtha has come from the word Tarati. Tarati means the one who goes across. So Tirtha means that which takes you across which makes you cross the ocean of Tantara, the phenomenal world of relationships which we have created in this world. And as a result, you are in trouble, you are having hardships, you are having sufferings because of relationship with people. I lose somebody, then I say that all my life is lost. Oh, my son is gone, my wife is gone, my grandson is gone, my grandfather is gone. And immediately you feel as if the entire earth has fallen under your feet. This is what happens. All sorts of hardship arise. Who asks you to establish a relationship? He is one person and you are another person. You are a different soul and he was a different soul who came over here. 
with their respective condition. What have we got to do with it? It is just like a number of people joining together in a compartment of the rail. That's all. And when the destination comes, somebody's destination comes in morning for a block, somebody's destination comes in the evening, the fellow whose destination comes in morning for him, he gets down, he gets away. So when the question of bemoaning is lost, oh this one has got down, I have lost my company, will you bemoan like that? So these are all artificial relations which you have created and you have been involving yourself in the maze of such relationships and you are having all these hardships. So the one who takes this across is the ocean, you will never be able to get over it. And that is what causes everything, it causes anger, it causes greed, it causes anguish, it causes passion. And we are, uh, for, for, uh, in order to favor our own grandson, our own son, we are prepared to go to the extent of murdering people. So what sort of a sin we are prepared to commit? There is no end to the seriousness of a sin. To which end we will go to, uh, uh, to establish our relations with people? And thus, you go down, down, down. When will we ever reach? You will be always going in the circle of birth and death again and again and again, the karma. When will you be able to get over it? So you have to strike off, take an act, cut off all the relationships with the name of the Lord. That is the only way. Remember the Atman at all times. He alone is true. So yes, Swatmati Tam Bhajati. So the best of the Tirtas is Swatmati Tam. The holy river of the self, the Atman is the greatest river in which you take your bath, you will get not these regions, you will get your final liberation, you will get that infinite bliss, that the Vedas say there is no other way, there is only one way. Unless you know yourself, what is Atman? Atman is your own self. So know yourself and that self is the greatest and the holiest of all such good rivers. Take your both in it. And how do you say it is better than all? How do you say that this is better than all? Digdesha kala adhyana petya sarvagam This Atman, which is the river, where you can take both nicely, it is a river of nectar, it is all pervasive, it is everywhere. So sitting at this place, if you want, just to remind much with the Atman, forget everything, you can get the path. But can you do the Ganges? Will it come here now? So Ganges, you have to two months earlier to book your tickets uh, by air to Benares or Kashi, go there, you will have to take all people's conveniences, it is not so easy, but this you can get at any place. You can get in you can get it in you can get it in Delhi, you can get it in Kashmir, you can get it in Romania, you can get it in St. Petersburg, you can get it in Moscow. Where is it that you can't get? So sitting at your place, you can get this Atman. What an easy Tirtha it is. What an easy holy water. It is accessible at all places. Sarvakam. Then, it is all pervasive everywhere. Dikdesha kala adhyana pichya For Atman, you need not bother about some directions, you need not bother about the place, you need not bother about time. Now what happens? Now, the Ganges, if you go and take bother any Ganges anywhere, it doesn't give you the full effect. They say, the Ganges starts in the Himalayas in the north. It flows towards the south. But in between in various places, it again turns to the north. That it is called the Uttar Vahini Ganga. That is how it happens in Uttar Kashi. That is how it happens in Banaras. And that is why those places are considered to be. Wherever the Ganges, goes back and returns to its source like it doesn't return. Temporarily it just occurs as if it is going back towards now. So wherever the direction of the Ganges, it changes, there the water is the holier than any other places. So one has to go all the way there. 
So, you are getting that punya or the merit depends on the direction of the cancer. So, this ritual involves finding out whether the place where you are going, whether the Ganges is towards the north, towards the south. So, they are all dependent on these directions and pointers. Are there any firm things? You say west. Can you tell me, sir, this west, from which place it begins up to which place the west goes? Can you tell about north, from which place the north starts, up to which place it goes? Then what is this concept? It is all man-made concept. Without either tail or end, just for our convenience, you just said that this is north. This is not me, does it start from me? then this is all different. And for you, it starts from you. For her, it starts from there, not. So can there be several soldiers or not? Where does not start? Does it start from this wall? Does it start from this pillar? For each person, it starts from where he is. That's all you can see. That's all. Up to what it goes? You don't know. The entire thing is all concepts. So these baseless conceptual things on these those rituals are all based. For Atman, it is not based on any conceptual thing. Dik. Dik means direction of quarters. It doesn't depend. Anapetya. Anapetya means irrespective of, without regard, disregarding. So this Atma Tirtha has got nothing to do with them all. Irrespective of the direction. You need not find out whether Atman is turning towards the north or Atman is turning towards the south. Wherever you are, the Atman will reveal itself is everywhere. There is no question of direction for it. Then, Desha, please. So, obviously, you know, the place has got something to do where Ganges cannot come wherever you want. So, the Ganges happens to be somewhere else you have to go. So, it is dependent on the place. You can't get it where you want then call it the time. There are specific times in a year when if you go and have your bath, it produces very good results. If you go on other days, it doesn't have the time. See for instance, the days of no moon, we call it the Amavasya day, when the moon's digit is only one single. On such dark days, if you go and there are also special Amavasyas. See, you get it every month once. There is one no moon day. But there are certain Amavasyas in certain months which are considered especially sacred. They call it Somavati Amavasya. And like that there are times or Deepavali Amavasya. On those days or Chimilatri. So if you go on such days, then the effect is much more and you get the merit. So it depends on certain times when you have to go. Atman, 4 a.m., 5 p.m., 12 noon, whenever you want you can get it provided you have the will and you do all these processes. That's all. So it is not dependent on anapetya without any dependence on these factors like the quarters, like the place or the country and the time. Anapetya. Without dependent on all these things, disregarding all these things. Then, Shita Dihati. So, alright, from the south, here we are accustomed to a fairly hot climate. We have got only two seasons in this part, southern part. One is called the hot season, the other is called the hotter season. There are only two. We don't have winters. But in the hot season, if a slight breeze comes, we immediately cover up ourselves and we say, oh, it's cold. This is that. We never know what is cold. You have to go back to the Himalayas to find it. So, if you go all the way to, say, Rishikesh and Haridwar, if you go in winter, there will be so much cold, you will dare to touch it. In the month of April 30th, I went to Gangotri once. There is a source of the Ganges. I could touch the water with my little finger. The little finger, the tip of it got so paralyzed, I can take off my finger. I didn't dare. I never washed my mouth with the water. I didn't dare to take my bath after going such a long distance. I simply took it. That's all over. I didn't dare. I said I may get pneumonia, double pneumonia, who knows. 
So I didn't want it. So these Ganges and Lawbury are quite dangerous. Because Sita Ji, you see you get cold, all right? Let me go in summer then beautiful May, June. May, June it will be so hot like, we call it Agrila Chitra, where is the Vida? It will be just like fire and how many people die due to heat stroke and a man who is going for the first time, there is no guarantee he will come back alive. If you go at that time and then suddenly you hit yourself, then that's all, vomiting will start, you will admit to the hospital, heat stroke. So, all these problems are there if you are to depend on these gadgets and cosmetics. Atman, there is no heat, there is no cold, you sit anywhere under a tree in your home, inside the room, outside the room, summer, winter, rainy season, you can get in. So this is the holy water which has nothing to do with all these factors like Sita Adi, Sita Adi, Khriti. Khriti means it takes away, it takes away the cold, it takes away the heat. So there is no cold or heat. So the one which is independent of cold or heat or all these seasons, what are beautiful waters, holy waters we have, it is made to order, tailor made for your convenience, anytime, anywhere, any place. Nitya Sukham Niranjanam The pleasures you get out of this Atman, out of this Brahman when not she realize, for every you will get the bliss. It is not the bliss will last for two days and again you get back into your depression on the third day. It is permanent forever because you are merging the Brahman, you have become he. And he is one who is imperishable, he is immutable, he is forever. So that bliss is forever. Bliss is part of his nature. And you have become the Brahman. It becomes your nature. So your nature cannot leave you. So Nitya Sukham. Nitya Sukham means that which bestows you permanent bliss. An infinite permanent bliss. On the contrary, what happens when you go to the Ganges? You have your boss in the Ganges. The cosmic auditor makes an entry. Shantaranda came on 20th. He had four boss. It is there. So he says, 45 days he will get heaven. On the 46th day you have to go down to the earth. So when I die, I go there. Exactly 45 days on the 46th day, early morning, he will push me back into somebody's room. Then back one, that's all over. So that was not a permanent bliss. He went there for 40 days, 30 days, just like the, sometimes you win the lottery ticket, they will say, trip to India and back. You come to India for 10 days. They'll dine you, wine you in a nice hotel and then you'll say, sure, get out. Otherwise, you'll live on your own. That's all. So the same thing happens in the case of all these big regions that they have. It is all not permanent. It's, uh, it's only temporary life for a short period. While the one who abides in his Brahman, in his Atman, in his self, the one who is a wolf, who goes on finding out, who am I? This is not my role. I am existence. The body may go but I exist. Just like the bulb, the bulb may shut into pieces. The electricity continues. The electricity doesn't die. There is not even a small scratch or a bruise on his body. So the Atman remains unscathed at all times. It lives forever. Then who am I then? Who is the Atman? Can I see myself? What is my real figure? Let me take off my costumes. Let me go into the um, final room. Um, there is a special name. Is a Satya Allah Mahathir Green room. Green room. Green room. Let me go back to the green room and take off all these costumes and try to who am I really? Am I, the, am I David who is acting as David in this world? Am I Godman who is acting as Godman in this world? Am I Shantananda? No, you are none. There is only one who is taking all these things, you will find the Brahman. It is the cosmic, the final cosmic principle. He loves to act in all the roles. All the roles are hidden. There is nobody but him. Shita Tikham Nitya Tikham Niranjanam Niranjanam means absolutely immaculate, untainted, unpolluted. Now, so many people have seen the paper that the entire Janet is polluted, so many chemical industries in between, they are putting all their nutrients uh, into that and so many gutters of so many fine cities, they are all finding their place in the Ganges, the Ganges is highly polluted. So you never know, after going and nicely having 
we are bad as you come back. But Dr. Alagapun says you are having typhoid. Ciprofloxacin for 22 days. But when once you go into the Atman, there is no fear of pollution man, no anti-allergic tablets are required, no antibiotics are required, you come back fine, you come back finer and healthier than when you went into it. You will never come back, there is only thing. You will be there only. Unfortunately, our words come about your habits. <laughs> so, Niranjanam, it is absolutely unpolluted. You can't find a single speck of dust. Immaculate. Speak and span is the Brahman, the final place where you will reach. It is untainted. There is nothing there at all. There is no greed. There will be no anger. Because you find only yourself in all at that time. You are one. You get a holistic picture. Nobody is different from me. Even an ant is not different from me. The ant is my own role. I have taken the role of an ant. Then, where can you have enmity? Where can you have greed? Where will you take revenge? No revenge. No anger. No greed. No envy. No jealousy. On whom are you going to be jealous? It is you in that form. Is the ant going to be jealous of you or are you going to be jealous? See, that is a very fine thing. It is only a man who is jealous. You see the trees. One tree is very tall. One tree is so small. Have you ever seen the tall tree ever carrying it the other one and saying, Oh, you shorter, how is it? You are a woman, you are a short man. Or, does the godly tree ever see how big he is, when will I become like that? No, it is only a man who is jealous and envious. All these things, they are far better perhaps. They are never envious of each other. So, Niranjanam, unpolluted. Then, how should you approach this water? See, when you approach the gadgets, you don't go with your pants on. Huh? You take it off, you wear a small towel. So similarly, what are the preparatory practices, prerequisites required for taking a bath, a plunge into that river of Brahma, into that infinite river? Nishpriyaha. The only condition is live of nothing absolutely here we have got nothing to do. Don't say I got this duty, I got a duty towards the country, I got a duty towards my friend, I got a duty towards my son. So anybody who goes to the Ganges, he doesn't stay in Kashi has to come back. Oh my son's marriage has been fixed after tomorrow, so I have to run. Or he will say, oh, I have got a letter that my great-grandmother is in the hospital. Uh, she had had an accident and she is undergoing an orthopedic surgery, so I have to write. But here when you go to the Atma Tirtha, you leave everybody, you leave everything, there is no duty at all. The only duty imposed on you is find out who you are, that's all. And then you plunge into that water, irrespective, no, without any regard to anybody in this world, the entire thing is all a list of illusionship. Who is there for you? For whom should you care? Care for yourself. If you care for yourself, all of your dreams, all the people are your dreams. That's all. You see, there is a bigger woman. She was having a dream. In the dream she found a great prince came and she just took her on his horse and he was going riding. She asked the prince, Hey prince, where are you taking me? He said, look here, this is your dream. You tell me where should I take you. It is you who have to direct. It is your dream, not mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> the entire thing is your dream. So, the grand nanny was yours. It is all your dream. You are the only reality. And now when you are restricting yourself to the only reality, where is the question of anybody? There is no duty. Satya Karyam Navityate, the Gita says, for a realized soul, he has no duty towards anybody, not even to the world. He is not here to do anything for you because you don't exist for him. It is already he does it. See, he tries to play the role in the drama. And sometimes what happens is, the director who is taking the drama, he comes and joins the drama. That's all. It is like that. Vinish Kriyaha. So leave off all actions and then we will come to you. Then what happens?
वेदांशी थे कि फ्रेंच सर्वभू थे यू बिकम ऑल नोइंग यू हैव नोन एवरीथिंग यू नो व्हाट इज व्हाट यू नो दिस ऑल इन इंट्यूशन दैट आई एम ऑन एक्सिस्ट सो दैट इज ऑल टू बी नोन व्हाट इज इट दैट टू बी नोन दैट इज ऑल दैट इज ऑल दैट इज ऑल सो सर्वभूत थे ही बिकम ऑमनिशियन देन सर्वगत था He himself becomes the Brahman, so he is everywhere, all pervasive. Where should he go? Where should he come? He is everywhere. Then, Amritaha Bhumi. This is the last stage when such a jiva mukta, who has taken his bath in the Atman, who has come face with the Brahman and is dissolved into it, becomes one. What does he become? Now, no more birth and death. He becomes immortal. He becomes Amrita. Amrita, Amrita means one who dies. Amrita means the immortal. He becomes forever the immortal Brahman. He himself is there forever. He lives forever. The greatest of our sorrows, the greatest of our fears, is the fear of death, and he gets freed from it. That's all. What else do you want? You live in permanent bliss. What else do you want? And not only that, you have got all the knowledge in the world. So there is nothing lacking. You are perfect. You become a superconductor. A superconductor is one whose activity has come to zero. When on such conductor, your wire is reduced to zero degree Kelvin. There is the absolute temperature K. That is called minus two seventy three point one six degree centigrade or so. When it is reduced to a freezing point. All the electrons are in the perfect condition. There is only one perfect condition. Imperfect conditions can be many. If somebody says, "I am ill," he may ask, "How are you ill? Where is your tooth giving you the ache, or are you having ear ache, or are you having headache, or are you having pain in your stomach, or are you having ulcers?" There can be thousand imperfections. Perfection there is only one. Purna is one. He alone is, and we will be able. To Plunge into the perfection. When you are perfect, you require nothing. What is perfection? Perfection is the stage of no need, no wants, absolutely self-satisfied. You are in your own bliss. There is no wants anymore. If you are imperfect, you would like to make yourself perfect by having it. I am imperfect because I don't have a Mercedes Benz. I don't have a Toyota car. So when I get it, I think I become perfect. Then again, you have imperfection. Something else. Your son is an ordinary clerk. Somebody's son is a, a president of uh, some country. So my son should also be again. You are imperfect. But when once you reach that stage, there is nobody else. You alone are there. For whom are you to bother? And you are the lord of all you survey, the master of your destiny. So now with this, we. This book comes to a close. It has been written by the great Shankaracharya, the founder of the Advaita, who, from the age of eight to sixteen, who propagated such profound thoughts. To understand it in our eighty-fifth year, it becomes a problem. And he himself was inspired and wrote it. He is considered as the avatar of Lord Shiva himself. And many people, perhaps in a wrong notion, they think. This Atma Bodha is the primary in Vedanta. Yes, the great sages say you start with Atma Bodha. It is like a primer. Then go to Vivek Chudamani. Our Bhagwan Ramana has translated it. It is the best book. If somebody says, if you are going for 20 years to a lonely spot, which book you will take? I will say Vivek Chudamani, the Christ Bell. And Bhagwan is written in Tamil. But it is not so easy to understand the English for other people who don't know Tamil. So even though the English translation is the English translation is the poor translation, you can't never make head or tail of it. So the best book for it is there is a book available in um, Bharati Vidya Bhavan publication. Bharati Vidya Bhavan has got branches all through the world in every land. And the commentary is of Chandrasekhar of Bharati, one of the ex Shankara Charyas of. Shingeri, we have written such a beautiful commentary in Sanskrit, very, very clear and lucid, limpid, 
and that has been translated by another great person called Shankar Narayanan, who is a great grand disciple of Brahmana Maharshi. Finally, he was a Shishya of Yampi Pandit, Yampi Pandit was a Shishya of Ganapati Muni, and Ganapati Muni was a Shishya of Brahmana Maharshi. So that Shankar Narayanan had translated it. It's one of the most beautiful commentaries. Don't go by this. Shivananda, Ramananda, Krishnananda, Chinyananda, Shantananda, no commentary. The best commentary is that available. It's available in our library too. It's available in most of the places. So, and then you go to the top rank, the Prasthanatriya, the Gita, the Upanishads. They are considered to be the topmost in our Bible. They are the three, the tread, the canons, the tread canons. Finish up. Again you come back to Atabhoga. Then you will appreciate how profound it is. Start with it and end with it. This is what people say.